Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be taking a look at the PAL Kitty RGB30. Price wise, this is 80 US dollars shipped through litnxt.com, who is the company that sent me this device for review today. As usual, they've had no input in anything I've said and they haven't seen this video ahead of time. The biggest selling point here is the 4 inch 720p screen, which is also a 1 by 1 aspect ratio. It's an extremely niche display and perfect for those that like Pico 8 games, as well as shoot 'em ups and some other niche cases. None of those are things that I usually play, so for me, this handheld is already outside of something I'd normally want. Power wise, we can go up to PlayStation 1 and comfortably. And then we have some Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and PSP. Design wise, this is actually one of the better PAL Kitty designs. There's a normal D-pad here, big face buttons, front firing speakers, and all of that. But despite it having a normal D-pad, it's not a good D-pad. The edges of it are pretty sharp, and it suffers from false diagonals quite a bit. The diagonal issue doesn't bother me as much as the edges of the D-pad does. On the top is the inline triggers, which are fine, and then we have volume buttons, HDMI out, the reset and power button, and I've had to use the reset and power button quite a bit, which we'll talk about later. On the bottom, we have the USB-C charging port, operating system SD card slot, headphone jack, game SD card slot, and the OTG port. Let's talk about the ergonomics before we get into the display. Or, I guess the lack of, as this basically has zero ergonomics to speak of. Now, this portion likely depends on your hand size and just your preferences for holding a device, but I still can't find a comfortable way to hold this slab of a device even after having it for three weeks now. It's either you hold it in a way that you can only use the D-pad and face buttons, or really any of the front buttons, but then you have zero access to triggers, and I use those a lot for fast forwarding in Pokemon games. But if you want to use these sticks and the triggers, you're going to be in cramp land. It's just too tall of a device. And for me, who values comfort and ergonomics above all else, this doesn't pass for me. This will personally be going onto my list of just most uncomfortable and unergonomic devices that I've tested. And that's unfortunate, as the rest of this device is actually really good, especially for Pal Kitty. To show you an example, let's do a size comparison with the Retroid Pocket 2S. That extra height compared to the Retroid makes it just go to an unusable state. And now the RG405M. Simply adding curved sides like this would have made all the difference for ergonomics. And another would be the RG353PS, probably the most comfortable handheld that I've ever used, and for good reason. They went for ergonomics first here, compared to what's on this slab. Again, I just find this handheld way too tall for me personally, and how I like to hold my devices. On the software side, I've had so many issues with this handheld that's a wonder that I was able to film this review. Out of the box, the device wouldn't boot despite the fact that it was charging for a full day ahead of time. Then I reflashed the operating system and I got it to boot once and then after I shut it down, it would never boot again. This went on for days until I finally unplugged and replugged the battery and I was able to get things to work using Arc OS. But the actual battery on this device is pretty bad. I filmed this entire review for the handheld section in 45 minutes and I lost 50% battery in that time. Pal Kitty says this device should last 8 hours, and I'm struggling to think if they've even used this device. Not to mention it actually gets pretty warm to use, but let's just move on. Starting with NES, and we have a boy in his blob here. Again, this is a 1 by 1 aspect ratio, and it's 720p screen, so keep that in mind for these games. You can see here that we have the small bars on the top and bottom. Moving to Super Nintendo, and we have Super Mario Kart here as well. It's the same idea with the bars, but if you wanted, 
Some games will look better in the 8x7 aspect ratio, which fills up more of the screen. Super Mario Kart would likely fall into that list, but this will be up to you. Now looking at Game Boy with Mario's Picross, and Game Boy is a 10 by 9 aspect ratio, which fills up most of the screen as you can see. Here's Game Boy Color with Tetris DX, and it's the same idea here. This is why both of these systems look great on this device. Then we jump into Game Boy Advance with Minish Cap, and Game Boy Advance aspect ratio of 3 by 2 gives you much larger bars on the top and bottom, but it still looks pretty great. I don't consider it to be an issue or concern for me personally. Looking at the Sega Master System with James Pond 2, and this is going to be the same as NES basically, especially with the bars that you get. And that once again continues into Sega Genesis with NBA Jam. So you can sort of see that there's a pattern here for 4x3 aspect ratio systems that they'll have a letterbox effect. Just to show it off on another system that usually gets missed, here's the Sega Game Gear with Magical Puzzle Popples. And lastly, for the systems that run well, let's take a look at PlayStation 1 with Colin McRae's Rally. It's another 4x3 aspect ratio console, but games like these are going to run pretty well. That goes for anything that I've shown so far. Like I mentioned before, bonus consoles would be Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, and PlayStation Portable. And looking at Dreamcast, and a lot of Dreamcast will run just fine, right out of the box. Some you'll have issues with, but something like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 runs pretty good, but it's just not always at full speed. PlayStation Portable with Gran Turismo doesn't run that well, and so you'll likely be enabling frame skip for a lot of games out of the box. As you can probably tell, I'm not exactly blown away by this device. I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. I think this is definitely the best device that Pal Kitty has made so far, but I think the lack of ergonomics, the D-pad, and the battery are just things that push it over the edge for me into something that I don't want to play on. It wouldn't work for this device specifically, but if they had made it a little bit shorter in line with the Retroid Pocket 2S, or even smaller than that, this likely would have been one of my favorite devices this year, as I could overlook some of the other issues. But as is, ergonomics are number one for me, and so it's not even going to be staying on the shelf, it's not a device I'm going to be keeping. I value comfort and ergonomics above all else, and this doesn't pass. And as I start to think of my favorite handhelds of the year for 2023 and an upcoming video, this really does fall near the bottom for me. For comparisons to this device, I think that the better option would be a Miu Mini Plus or the Ambernic RG35XX, which are both at around that 50 US dollar price point. With the lack of power here, I'm just not seeing the added benefit to go to something like the RGB30. This is also going to be super dependent on everybody's financial situation, but for 34 US dollars more than the RGB30, you can get the Retroid Pocket 2S which is a better device in every which way that you look at it. It's more comfortable, it has better sticks, has a better D-pad, it can play a lot more games. Really, the only negative to it is the 3.5 inch screen compared to the 4 inch screen. I'm the spend once instead of spend twice type of person, so I'd rather just get the better handheld that can do anything that I want, rather than the more niche one that I'm going to have issues with. And so for me, this device sits right smack in the middle of both devices price-wise. For me, in that weird little space between the Miu and the Retro Pocket 2S, I don't really find any of the devices really worth it. Because at that price point, you'd rather just upgrade to the next tier or stick with the smaller handhelds. But if you're a collector and you're into a niche display that's good for Pico 8, arcade games, shoot 'em ups and all of that, then I guess the RGB30 makes sense but I just wouldn't recommend it to everybody. That's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.